you, Sharon and Jim live in an age of technology. Technology affects the way they learn, the way they relax, the way they see their world and themselves. Today, we can literally see ourselves in ways and with clarity that could scarcely have been imagined just a few decades ago. With the help of new technologies, medical science and photography work together to take you on a journey through the human body. I would suggest before our next meeting would be to read a chapter on the digestive system, which is what we'll be talking about then. Thank you. If we could look through the human body, we would see the digestive system. Ingested food is broken down and absorbed by the body in the process of digestion. In the mouth, the jaws, teeth, and tongue break down food physically. Enzymes secreted from three pairs of salivary glands start the chemical process of digestion. Swallowing propels the food down the esophagus to the stomach, a J-shaped muscular sac. The stomach churns and bathes the food in acid and digestive enzymes until it reaches a pasty consistency and is called chyme. Chyme enters the small intestine, a tube more than seven meters long, where it is mixed with digestive juices produced by the pancreas and the liver. Indigestible food then enters the meter and a half long large intestine, where water, salt, minerals and vitamins are absorbed before elimination. From start to finish, the muscular digestive tract measures more than nine meters, about 30 feet. Sharon and Jim are off on a picnic. The lunch they packed contains food's three principal nutrient groups, carbohydrates in the bread and fruits, fats in the butter, and protein in the egg and meat of their sandwiches. With the help of a camera receiving images through tiny fibers in a tube that can be swallowed, we will be able to see what happens to food as it passes through the digestive tract. Oh, look. Oh, well, it's strawberry. Why don't you go ahead and eat it? OK. Chewing helps to increase the surface area of ingested food speeding chemical breakdown by enzymes in the saliva. The enzyme salivary amylase starts to chemically split carbohydrates, like starch in the bread and complex sugars in the fruit, into simpler sugars. The salivary glands produce up to a liter of saliva daily. One pair of ducts delivers saliva produced in glands under the tongue. Saliva lubricates food so that it glides easily down the throat. Saliva also dissolves food particles so they can be tasted. The tongue positions food for chewing and swallowing and is also an organ of taste. The surface of the tongue is covered with thousands of projections called papillae. The largest, the circumvallate papillae, are found in a V-shaped formation toward the back of the tongue. Each circumvallate papilla is surrounded by a canal. Under greater magnification, we can see bacteria on the surface of the papilla. At enormous magnification, the surface takes on a maze-like appearance. This cross-section of a canal shows the onion-shaped taste buds embedded in the papilla wall. Taste buds distinguish between sweet and sour, salty and bitter. Millions of bacteria live in the mouth and throughout the digestive tract. Some, like these rod-shaped bacteria, which are only four microns long, may be related to the formation of cavities and to some gum diseases. 
different bacteria elsewhere in the digestive tract may cause diarrhea or food poisoning, or produce beneficial byproducts like vitamins. Swallowing is a voluntary reflex. Food is propelled toward the stomach by the contraction of muscles in the throat. This action also initiates peristalsis, a wave of muscular contractions that continues all the way through the digestive tract. Here we can see peristalsis in the small intestine. Food mixed with barium, a contrast medium which reflects x-rays, allows us to follow the food through the digestive tract. This imaging technique, called fluoroscopy, is now a standard medical diagnostic procedure. The muscular processes of swallowing and peristalsis are also at work on the wad of food, or bolus, in the swan's esophagus. <coughs> food sometimes enters the trachea, or windpipe, by mistake. This sets off a coughing reflex that expels the food. A flap of tissue called the epiglottis closes the opening to the trachea during normal swallowing. In the pharynx, air and food pathways cross. One path exits to the nose, a second to the mouth, a third to the trachea, and a fourth to the esophagus. When we swallow, the opening to the back of the nose is closed automatically as the tongue presses against the roof of the mouth and the muscles of the pharynx contract. Simultaneously, muscles in the pharynx bend the epiglottis backward over the trachea. The food bolus is now channeled into the esophagus. These blueberries were swallowed whole to make it easier for us to see them as they travel the digestive tract. A camera mounted at the end of a fiber optic tube records the journey. Swallowing usually takes only a second, but the unchewed berries take much longer to move down the esophagus. At the far end of the esophagus, a ring of muscle called a sphincter relaxes temporarily to allow food to enter the stomach. Under enormous magnification, we can see the cells that line the stomach wall and millions of gastric gland openings. Gastric glands secrete up to a liter of fluid during each meal. Gastric juice, seen here in bright orange, contains hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid activates the protein-splitting enzyme pepsin and mucus, a fluid that protects the stomach lining. In the stomach, food is further broken down chemically by acid and pepsin. The muscular walls relax and contract to break down the food mechanically. After a large meal, it may take up to four hours for the acidic mixture in the stomach to become a semi-solid mixture called chyme. The principal type of chemical digestion that takes place in the stomach is digestion of proteins by pepsin. This is a time-lapse sequence of acid and the enzyme pepsin in the gastric juice digesting proteins in the egg. The gastric enzyme pepsin is far more effective than acid alone in breaking down the connective tissue and digesting the protein in meat. As mixing continues, peristaltic waves regularly propel a small amount of chyme through the pyloric sphincter into the first portion of the small intestine, the duodenum. The pyloric sphincter relaxes when the duodenum is able to handle additional amounts. In the duodenum, the intestinal wall is covered with millions of microscopic projections called villi. Nearly 25 million villi line the small intestine, 
which is almost four centimeters in diameter and continues for another seven and a half meters. Also in the duodenum are openings through which digestive juices from the pancreas and liver are emptied into the small intestine. Many of the enzymes in pancreatic juice are essential for digestion. Pancreatic amylase continues carbohydrate digestion. Pancreatic lipase starts to digest fats. And trypsin continues protein digestion begun in the stomach. Bile is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder until it is released through special ducts into the duodenum. Bile salts emulsify fats, like butter, into very fine droplets that in turn are further broken down by the enzyme pancreatic lipase. This liver cell is packed with organelles that can perform more than 500 separate metabolic functions. Two of these metabolic functions are important in digestion. First, liver cells produce bile, which is stored in the gallbladder until needed. Liver cells also remove excess glucose in the blood and store the energy contained in glucose in the form of glycogen. When glucose levels in the blood are low and the body needs energy, liver cells convert glycogen back into glucose and release it into the blood. The folded walls of the small intestine ensure that food moves slowly through the digestive tract. The folded walls and the villi lining them greatly increase the intestinal surface area for digestion and absorption. The villi produce intestinal enzymes that break down food molecules on their surface into subunits small enough to be absorbed. A closer view of the villi show mucus-containing cells on the surface. Under greater magnification, a layer of even smaller projections called microvilli can be seen. About 600 microvilli protrude from each villus. The intestinal enzymes on the surface of the microvilli digest the larger nutrient molecules so they can be absorbed into the villus. Indigestible fruit and vegetable matter, like the blueberry skin, remain intact because our bodies lack enzymes necessary to digest the cellulose in plant cell walls. More than 90% of the nutrients are absorbed by the villi in the small intestine. These digestive products include simple sugars, such as fructose, glucose, and galactose from the carbohydrates, amino acids from the proteins in the egg and meat, and fatty acids and glycerol from the fats in the butter. The simple sugars, like glucose, fuel the cells of the body. Amino acids are reassembled by the body into enzymes, hormones, and structural proteins. Fatty acids and glycerol play an important role in energy storage and the metabolism of vitamins. But how do the nutrients reach the cells? Smaller molecules, like amino acids and sugars, pass through the wall of the villus into a network of blood capillaries. Larger molecules, like fats, pass into a much larger central lymph vessel called a lacteal. The mesentery, which holds the intestine in place, also contains the vessels which carry nutrients away from the digestive tract to the cells of the body. Lymph vessels carrying fats are barely visible near the red spot. The mesentery also contains a rich supply of blood vessels that transport smaller nutrient molecules like sugars and amino acids directly to the liver for processing. Undigested material and bacteria empty into the large intestine or colon 
which is twice the diameter of the small intestine and continues for another one and a half meters. Indigestible foods, like this vegetable fiber, aid in elimination by retaining moisture and providing bulk. Certain bacteria in the colon acting on these wastes produce vitamins as a byproduct. Cells like these, which line the colon, are specialized to absorb water, salt, and other minerals, as well as bacterially produced vitamins. These gland openings are lined with mucus-producing cells. Mucus lubricates the semi-solid wastes, now called feces, which are eliminated once or twice a day. The lunch that Sharon and Jim ate is now well on its way to becoming part of them. That food will give them energy, help their bodies repair themselves, and maintain their health. The digestive system carries out all these complex processes with great precision and efficiency, all without our even having to think about it. <laughs>